Hello and welcome everyone, this is Type V3 with the Transformers Masterpiece Review of the Takara Tomy MP13 Soundwave. This is the ever so loyal Decepticon communications officer and easily one of the most iconic Transformers from 1984. Soundwave is a tape deck and I've got some mixed feelings on this alt mode. From a glance I think it looks solid, the shape is right, the colors give off a nice metallic shimmer and all the major details are here, such as the plastic window, large buttons, and the recording light. The sides look good too with their volume rockers and auxiliary inputs. Yet the view from the rear is troublesome. It doesn't really resemble a tape deck anymore and is surprisingly full of gaps. Then when you take a closer look at the toy as a whole, you realize just how plain it is. Minor panel lining and the additions of small text here and there would have been nice. This alt mode has some cool features too. The buttons can be pushed in, although the play, stop, and record buttons are just static and mostly there for display. The power button on the side can go up and down, as can the volume rocker on the other side. There's even a headphone jack at the top so that if you had a pair of headphones you can plug them in. Though they don't go all the way in because the hole is too small. And of course there is an eject button for the tape deck, but we'll talk about this later on in the video. As a whole I think Masterpiece Soundwave's alt mode is good but not quite great. To be honest I still think the original G1 toy gets the job done a little bit better. Though can the same be said for the robot in disguise. From a basic conceptual level, Soundwave's transformation is fairly simple. After all, all you're doing is converting a giant block into a blocky robot. But to my surprise, Soundwave offers a much more complex conversion. In fact, I think there's a little too much complexity going on here. The legs, for instance, carry a lot of intricate and specific sections to them. The interlocking tabs, along with the unfolding panels and the sides of the legs, are tough to get out. And I wouldn't exactly call them intuitive it almost feels like a lazy design approach. Still, despite these issues, overall I can't deny that there's some clever engineering going on here, and the final result is definitely worth it. There's no denying it, MP13's robot mode is sharp, and this is without doubt the best looking G1 sound wave to date. Again, the silver and blue metallic paint give off a fantastic appearance, and the gold trim completes the look. The overall silhouette is clean, and from every angle, each section of the body seems proportionally correct. The head sculpt is perfect, and I love the candy red visor that's been used. Also impressive is the surface detailing found throughout the figure. Whether it's the busy patterns on Soundwave's back, or the flicks and lines down the legs, all of it just elevates this figure's final presentation. The way I see it, there's only one aesthetic issue on this robot, and it has to do with the leg panels. They don't actually look bad, it's just that I wish they were completely flush with the leg. The base seems to protrude out awkwardly for no apparent reason. At 9 inches tall, Soundwave makes for a hefty sized toy and scales well with other recent Transformers Masterpiece releases. Of course, scale in G1 Transformers isn't exactly the most accurate of things. For articulation, Soundwave has a swivel neck with a hinge, so you can get some good range out of it. There's no tilting action, but that's quite alright. The shoulders have a swivel, a hinge, and then a second hinge at the, at the base of the arm, as well as a bicep swivel, an amazing double jointed elbow. Look how far he can bend that. And then the fist has a swivel. Uh, these three fingers are each on a single hinge, while the index has its own joint, as well as a, a second joint at the first knuckle. So, and, and all this arm articulation can equate to Soundwave being able to push his own eject button, which is pretty awesome. Uh, there's also a waist swivel, which I was surprised to see, and I love it when toys of this size have a waist swivel. The hips have a good uh, outward motion to them, and there's even a ratcheted joint going forward. And I love that it's clicky and that there's small clicks, because uh, it, it creates a, a lot more uh, options for posing. There's a thigh swivel, and there's this weird joint because of transformation. It's not usable, but hey, it's there. Uh, the knee joint is only a 90 degree bend, which is a little disappointing, but... I'm glad that it's on soft ratchets to keep it stable. And the ankles are really interesting because they're actually on like this double hinged section which allows for up and down, back and forth, and it can also somewhat dictate the balance and height of the entire figure. The one thing I will say is these feet are die cast so it keeps, some, uh, keeps good center of gravity. But the one design oversight is that this is all metallic paint down here, and when you stand him, depending on the surface, he is prone to scratching, so that's just something to watch out for. Also worth noting is the shoulder can can have some rotation here and there, and this extra side can pop out. Um, it's actually his weapon, so you can just pull it out like so, whip out the handle, and then pull out the tip, and then you can just tab it into his fist, which is fairly simple. 
close up the fingers, and now he's got his weapon. Uh, it's a really great gimmick, and I love it. And as a whole, the articulation on Soundwave is kind of awesome. I have almost no complaints. If anything, I would just want more range in the knee joint, but for his size and how many joints he has, especially this arm, I am not disappointed at all. On to the accessories, and MP13 comes with quite a lot of interesting extras in the box. The first of which is Megatron in his Walther P38 mode. It looks fantastic. The grip can extend for easier placement in the figure's fist, and the stock has a hinge for movement. Also, you can remove all the pistol's add-ons if you prefer a more naked look. Next is a clear Energon cube. One of the sides is removable so that you can attach it to Soundwave's chest. The accessory itself is pretty self-explanatory, still it's always fun to see what you can shove in there. There's also a hand-mounted sensor probe. It's nice for what it is. The best part is that it stores conveniently on the toy's backside in both robot and alt mode. Moving on, and what we have is one of Soundwave's more interesting accessories, the grid display panel. It attaches over the figure's chest and is supposed to emulate a screen. You're provided paper cutouts to display here, or can take the creative route and make your own. It's a simple yet clever gimmick. Soundwave's final accessory comes in the form of his trusty pal Laserbeak, complete with his own pink cassette case. The tape itself is exceptional in appearance, though the backside could use some work. As for transformation, it's simply incredible and a marvel of toy engineering. It's thoughtful, self-contained, and results in a stunning bird mode. I really couldn't be more impressed with how well this turned out. Laserbeak has some fairly limited articulation. You get the wings that flap just a little bit. Uh, the legs can go up and down and they have a swivel and the neck has a hinge at the base and top for some movement you can even push on his forehead to extend out his little camera which is a nice little feature some issues i have found though are because of the transformation you do get some paint scratching here and there specifically right here just because of the way that has to rub up against the inner hinge there it does end up scratching that silver paint off it's Again, another design oversight, but I'm sure that in the, because you can't see it in the long run, it won't really matter. Uh, he does have grooves on the base of his feet that line up with Soundwave's shoulders, so you can pin them in here. Or if you want something more classic, you can take Soundwave, and he has a, a clear groove right there, and then you can clip him on like so. And of course, because he is also a cassette tape, if you don't want him there, you can always just place him right in his chest. And that is a very cool gimmick, something that uh, definitely will please older Transformers fans. So let's wrap up on Takara's masterpiece Soundwave. The aesthetics are great, especially in robot mode, and while I found the transformation too complex, he makes up for it with his awesome articulation. MP13 is a good toy. On the other hand, in the realm of masterpiece Transformers, good isn't quite enough. Alongside other releases such as MP10 or MP12, Soundwave doesn't feel entirely special by comparison. I hate to say it, but on his own, he's just a boring toy. Of course, there's more to this set than Soundwave alone. There's a great deal of accessories included here that all offer wonderful and diverse play patterns. Then there's the inclusion of Laserbeak, who is surely one of the best Transformers of all time, and dare I say it, even better than Soundwave himself. So with all that said, as a whole, MP13 is an astonishing package that is a must for Transformers fans. Now there still is one more thing that needs to be addressed. Price. And it's a large one at that, $160 to be exact. Personally, I think that's a big ask for what you're getting. However, only you can decide if this masterpiece Transformer is worth the blow to your wallet. Anyways, this has been Type V3. Thanks for watching, and before you pass judgment on MP13, I urge you to hold your thoughts, because there's another, more economical way of attaining this set that might be of more interest to you.